Praise God. We're going to be in the Old Testament this morning. We're going to read out of 2 Samuel chapter 2. 2 Samuel chapter 2. We'll start reading in verse 18 and we'll read through verse 23. I didn't even title my message. I know Danielle always wants a title, but I really. Oh, yeah, I did. I got a title for you Run Like a Row. You know what a row is? A row. R O E. It's a deer. Run like a row. All right, here we go. Here we go. Run like a row. 2 Samuel chapter 2, verses 18 through 23. It says, And there were three sons of Zeruah there, Joab and Abishai and Azahel. And Azahel was, light as, was as light of foot as a wild robe. And Azahel pursued after Abner. And in going, he turned not to the right hand nor to the left from following Abner. Then Abner looked behind him and said, Are you Azahel? And he answered, I am. And Abner said to him, Turn thee aside to the right hand or to the left and lay thee hold on one of the young men and take you his armor. But Azahel would not turn aside from following of him. And Abner said again to Azahel, Turn thee aside from following me. Wherefore should I smite thee to the ground? How then should I hold up my face to Joab your brother? How be it he refused to turn aside? Wherefore Abner with the hinder end of the spear smote him under the fifth rib that the spear came out behind him and he fell down there and died in the same place. It came to pass that as many as came to the place where Azahel fell down and died, that they stood still. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would empower me by the presence of your Holy Spirit to speak forth as an oracle of your word, O oh Lord, and that your word would be a life to your people, O oh Lord, that it would minister your hope to them that it would strengthen those that may feel weary Lord God that it would give revelation Lord of your power and your goodness and your plan Lord God you do what only you can do Lord supernaturally Lord we're dependent upon your presence oh sweet spirit of God Lord it, fancy words aren't going to do anybody any good Lord what we need is you you and you alone we pray, oh Lord, that you would preach this, this morning, Lord, that you would teach this morning and that you would have your way in this house. In Jesus' name, amen. So much in this story, really, that uh, it's not even in my notes, but just that fact hit me last night when I was looking. And all those that came to that place where Azahel fell stood still. It became a place almost like a memorial. You know what I'm saying? Like, like through the, it doesn't tell us how long, but basically whenever people would walk from that time moving forward and they would stop, they would say, stop. Let's stand still for a moment because this is the place right here where Azahel fell. And this is, this is where he died. You know? And I got to tell you that I've been reading the Bible for a long time. And it was just this time about a couple of weeks ago, whenever this was the daily reading. And I was like, Look at this story. This is so amazing. It jumped off the page. And you see, you got to understand the context of what's going on. David had already been anointed king prior, at least 13 years prior, and, but yet he had not been appointed king. You know the story. He was running and, and, and Saul was chasing him because Saul is a type of the flesh meaning you after King Jesus, which is a type from King David. King David is a type of Jesus. After King Jesus has been appointed to be the king of your heart, anybody that's been walking with the Lord for any length of time knows that Saul wants to still be king. The flesh wants to still be king instead of letting the spirit of God rule and reign, instead of letting Jesus take the throne of our hearts. And so here, just Saul refuses to die, ref refuses, well, let's say this, he refuses to get off the throne. And now in this story where we are, Saul has died. And so now it's time. Now it's time for the rightful king to take the throne, which is King David. And But see, Abner is the general of Saul. 
And Abner doesn't want to let Saul rule and reign on the throne. I'm sorry, he doesn't want to let David rule and reign on the throne. And so what he does is he goes and gets a man named Ishbosheth, which is Saul's son, and he puts him on the throne and says, you'll reign over Gilead. But Azahel, which is a brother of, of, of Joab, which ends up being David's general, and also a son of one of David's sisters. So Azahel is actually one of David's nephews. Then in addition to that, he was a captain in David's army. And one of the things that I want to tell you too is this, is that Azahel is also listed in the Bible as one of David's mighty men. One of David's mighty men of valor. If you've ever read the stories about David's mighty men of valor, I mean, it, it, it talks about the fact that there was one guy that slew so many people that by the time he was done, his hand was frozen to his sword. He couldn't even, all, I mean, I'm just thinking as a nurse practitioner, all his electrolytes were depleted from his body and his muscles were cramped up and he couldn't even get his hand off the sword. And then, and then there was one man that went down into a frozen pit and slew a lion. And, and these mighty men of valor and Hazael was considered a mighty man of valor. But I want to tell you something. The Bible says that when they first showed up, the mighty men of valor were not mighty men at all. Mm. It actually says that they were those that were full of distress. They were discontented and they were in debt. Mm. And whenever David was on the run, there was about 400 of them. And they went out and they met him in the wilderness and hung out with him in the king of Adullam, the cave of Adullam. And but, but as time went on under the leadership of this mighty king, they, they became mighty men of valor. And Azahel was one of those men. You know, I think about this story, if you will, because Abner, who refuses to allow David to reign, what the story says is that Abner's running and that Azahel is as swift as a wild row. You know what that means? That dude could run, <laughs> right? He could run. He had some, like nowadays they say, that dude had some jets. He was, he was good. And so I'm just thinking he's just, he's just running full blast on the battlefield. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really know how long. I mean, what you think? Five, seven minutes. Top end speed on the battlefield with all the adrenaline pumping. Maybe longer with the adrenaline. I, I don't know. But you get the point that I'm making. It couldn't have been that long of a sprint. And I and I see Abner. He, I, this is what. It, are you as hell? You know. I'm just trying to give you a little picture of it. Are, are you as hell? Yes, I am. Turn to the right or the left. No, I'm not turning to the right or the left. I'm coming after you. I'm going to get you. And he's like, no, please stop. Turn to, turn to the side. Go get one of those young men. Go grab his armor so that I don't want to have to, I don't want to have to run you through. How would I face your brother Joab? See, these are brothers. But there's division and disunity. That's not really part of my message. But Lord, help your people. Yes, not to walk in division and disunity yes. that we would come together as the people of God. That, that we can actually accomplish the will of God on earth. Amen. That our heart, that we would die to ourselves and that we would let the rightful king rule on the throne. And I got news break. You ain't the king. You're not the king of your own life and you're sure not the king of God's kingdom. Jesus is the king of kings the Lord of Lords. And the Bible says if you're a believer this morning, you've been purchased with the blood of Jesus. The Bible says you are not your own. You were bought with a price. You were bought with the precious blood of a lamb who was who was slain before the foundations of the earth. He's the eternal lamb of God. God had a plan and his name was Jesus. Amen. And hallelujah. You belong to him. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Listen to me, my friend. And I want to call you my friend this morning. If you have not received Christ as your Lord and Savior, you really need to be thinking about that. One of my daughters, I'm not going to say who, <laughs> is kind of cute, really. Back in the day, I was like, dude, you've been running with this kid. You, this girl been your friend. Have you told him about Jesus? And I can remember, you know, I don't know that I was the, the right kind of dad all the time. I was kind of hard. Please forgive me. My daughter. I said, you really want to tell your friend about Jesus because what's it going to be like? She, oh, I wish that my friend would have told me about Jesus as she's sitting there burning in the devil's hell, right? I told her. And so she turned her, and about two weeks later, I said, did you tell your friend about Jesus? She's like, yeah. I said, what did you say? She said, I asked her if she'd ever been born again. I said, well, what did she say? 
She said no, and she said, you might want to look into that. <laughs> Praise God. So what I'm trying to say is, is this, you might want to look into that. If you've never been born again, you might want to look into that, my friend. Like you might want to be experience a true conversion. Yes. Amen. What does that mean, preacher? I'm glad you asked. It means that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world that the world might be condemned, but that through him, amen, that the world would be saved. And I want to tell you that God has been about this plan for thousands of years. He's given the world Jesus and Jesus died on the cross for our sin. And the way we receive him for ourselves is that we open our heart up. We open up our heart and we say, Jesus, I want you. I want you to live in me. I believe you died for me. And the Bible says you rose again from the dead. I want you to come into me and rise in me. And when you do that, a miracle happens in your heart. And it may not happen all overnight. It's not going to happen all overnight. But if you'll let it, he's going to work in you. Yeah. And he'll bring the change. Yes. And it's going to be a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yes. As the love of God overwhelms you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But here's Azahel, and he's like, I'm not running to the right or the left. And he didn't have time. And you know what the scripture says? It says that 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 when it was all said and done, Abner with the, I don't know what he did. I don't know. It says the hinder part of the spear, but it doesn't mean the back of it. I don't know if he flipped it over. <laughs> I don't know how he did it. But it says that he smote him underneath his fifth rib. And there's other times in the scripture I found after that where it keeps saying that they smote him underneath the fifth rib. I'm not trying to get too fancy and draw too big of a picture and it may not even look that good but I would say that the heart looks something kind of like this right and, and I was trying to I was trying to look at a, a picture and, 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 and one two three four one two three one two three four five and one of the things that I notice is that if you perfectly position your spear underneath the fifth rib, what you hit is the apex of the heart right here, where both of the ventricles come together. You want to talk about blood loss, my friend? It's just all poured out. All at once. And I know that I'm taking liberty with the Old Testament text to preach to you this morning. But what I see in Azahel is a person that refused to go to the right or to the left. What I, what I see in Azahel is a person that had one thing determined in his mind. That an injustice of the kingdom was trying to be done and he said, oh no, not today. Not on my watch. On my watch, the rightful king is going to rule and reign. Yes. And I'm going to make sure. And I'm willing to give my life for this thing is what Azahel said. And when it was all said and done, his heart was poured out. His heart was poured out for this one purpose. And it was to make the rightful king, the heir of the throne. And, and on that day, he gave his life for the purposes of God. One thing that I noticed is that the name Azahel actually means God made. Not to be confused with man made. Amen. Not to be confused with being conformed to the image of this world. Be not conformed to this world, but instead be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Not to be formed and fashioned by the hand of man. Not to be formed and fashioned by the industry. Not to be formed and fashioned by all of the things that are going on in the world. Not, definitely not to be formed and fashioned by what the modern church says is, is Jesus and what true Christianity is. There's only one place you're going to find out what true Christianity is, my friend. And it's in this book right here, being led by the Holy Spirit to tell you the truth. And if you're never in this book, because if you think that as much as I, I want to preach the gospel to you. I can promise you that. I want to read the word. I want to preach the word. But if you think that me preaching to you on Sunday and Wednesday and even if you showed the Bible stuff, uh, Bible study on Sunday night is going to be enough for you to learn what this means. I mean, after all, and I told him yes, I told him yesterday, after all, if this story is true and we are eternal beings and we are going to one day stand before God and, and give an account for our lives, it seems like this eternal story Soul part of us should be waking up and realize this is really important. Yeah. This is really important. 
This is not some game that we're playing, my friend. This is eternal life. Praise God. God made you. God wants to form and fashion you with his own hands. He wants to renew your mind. With the tr transform your mind and renew your mind with the word of God. He wants to teach you what his word says and he wants you to learn how to believe what his word says. Amen. His whole word, every word, to believe that he is a miracle worker, to believe that he can heal sick bodies, that he can raise the dead if he so chooses, that he can raise you from the dead, amen, that he can, that he can transform your broken heart, that he can amen. heal you, amen, and that he can cause things to happen in your life that you never even imagined. Amen. Amen. The things that you thought were broken and dead, he can cause them to come to life. He can cause rivers in the desert. He can cause flowers to bloom in the midst of a desert. I'm telling you right now, the God that I serve is an amazing miracle working God. Amen. 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 So that's who we're talking about this morning. That we're talking about Hazael and how he had a desire, amen, to see God's plan come to pass. He was running that race, you know, running that race. And the scripture talks about it in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. He was running the race. He was, I said, call it a race. He was racing towards, he didn't realize it at the moment, maybe. But I don't really think he cared that much. He was racing towards the goal. And in the scripture says in Hebrews chapter 12, that says this, that seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Hebrews 12, 1. Let us lay aside every weight. And the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. The Lord, see, that's one of the problems with sin and weights, cares of the world, concerns regarding the world. That we can get so caught up in these things that they weight us down. And then we're not able to accomplish really the word that the Lord gave to Sabrina this morning that she read. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. Do you believe that this morning? Do you believe that if you will seek after? No, I, I'm, I'm talking to somebody in here this morning. Trust me. No, I'm talking to all of you. I'm preaching to the preacher first. Do you believe that if you will set your mind like as a hell on the will of God. And that you will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Whatever that means. I know. I mean, I got a good idea what it means. But, but, but look, you will seek after God's will and not your own. That he will allow all these other things to come to pass. Mm -hmm. Or are you really, help me out here, church. Or are you really more worried about your own will? And that's part of the dying of self. See, I'm not here to tell you something that's not true. The word of God says this. If any man's going to follow after me, let him deny himself, pick up his cross and follow after me. Any man that tries to save his life is going to lose his life. And any man that loses his life for my sake will gain eternal life. Listen, some people are so driven with a desire for success and making money. And listen, I'm going to tell you right now, I've been one of them. That, that it'll, it'll take you over. It'll take you over and then you may make it one day. I don't know. You might make it and then you might lose it all. Then you might gain it back and then you might lose it all. You might finish your whole life to the point where he who dies with the most toy wins. <laughs> I'm here to tell you right now, that's not what this life is about. Amen. It's about putting the right king on the throne. It's about seeking after God's kingdom and his righteousness and seeing God's will done upon the earth. I kind of, I really wish that Azahel would have lived. You know what I'm saying? There's a part to me that wishes that he would have listened to Abner, went and got some armor, and then took off running. Just because I would have liked to have heard some more stories about him, because I can see that his heart was just full of fire for the Lord, but that wasn't really the plan of God for his life. But I do want you to know this, that for you and I in this new covenant, that we need to understand that you don't want to engage this battle. You need to under without the armor of God. You need to understand that you are in a spiritual battle. Yes. I need you to know that this morning. Amen. For the weapon, though we walk in the flesh, we war not after the flesh. 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds and the casting down of imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Amen. What does that even mean? It means that while you're, even though you're walking in this fleshly realm in the physical, you're not at war in flesh. The weapons of your warfare are not physical. They're spiritual. Because Ephesians 6 says that you're in a spiritual war. You're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Right. Make that real for me, preacher. I, I mean, I can make it real in a lot of ways, but I, how many of you have got irritated with somebody this weekend? Okay, thank you, sister, for your honesty. I know, man, look, if you raise your hand, thank you, brother. And there's more, I get it. You have to because all of us at some point in time got irritated with somebody recently. And maybe even to the point where you was like really irritated. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, y'all do. I'm not the only one that's ever manifested that kind of action, right? And really irritated. Well, can I tell you that you're not in a physical battle? The enemy knows how to make people act not right. <laughs> how you know that, preacher? Because I know my own life. And I know some of your lives. Yeah. And the enemy's made some of y'all act not right. He's made me act not right before. And we love Jesus. Now just imagine people that ain't even saved. Amen. Just imagine people that don't even care about the things of God. They're being driven by demonic forces. Yes. And you may not believe in demons this morning, but I'm here to tell you demons are real. Amen. And the scripture says that you're not in a war with flesh and blood. You are in a war with demonic spirits, principalities and powers, world rulers and demonic spirits. And I'm here to tell you, Christian, you need to be careful how you live your life. Because if you go around opening up doors and give the enemy opportunity and a place in your life, you can allow not only strongholds but footholds on the inside of your life and you can give permission to the enemy. I'm here to tell you that there's freedom in Jesus. I'm here to tell you that Jesus defeated the principalities and powers. I'm here to tell you that he defeated world rulers. And I'm here to tell you that he defeated wicked spirits. When he died on the cross. That's what the scripture teaches. But if you and I keep playing games with the dirty devil. Come on somebody help me out. <laughs> Why you got to preach that way? Because I know good and well. Many Christians keep. We fall short of the glory of God. And we allow the enemy permission. I need you to understand this morning. That victory is yours. I need you to understand this morning. That Jesus already purchased your victory. When he died on the cross. I need you to understand this morning. That the Holy Spirit. If you're saved this morning. Has been made one with your spirit. That the glory of God. Is on the inside of you. And that the power of the kingdom of God. Is on the inside of you. And that Ain't no devil in hell that can take you down. There's no devil in hell that can have authority over you. Hallelujah. Unless you give him permission. Right. Don't give him permission. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't let vain imagine. That's just one example. There's so many examples we could go through. But I want to encourage you. Don't let vain imaginations get in your way as you fight this fight. What is a vain imagination? What is an imagination? It's a thought. It's a mindset. There's a whole lot of different mindsets that can be out there. Yes. A mindset that, that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Yes. There can be mindsets. You know, you can even take scripture to support what you believe. Well, the scripture says that God wants to bless me. Yeah, because he's a blessing God. That's what he does. He blesses folk, does he not? <laughs> he's a blessing God. I know that he blesses people because he's blessed me. And if I said something different, I would be lying. Right. But you can take the fact that God is a blessing God and you and not die to yourself first and start creating your own kingdom. Mm -hmm. 
And the whole time you're over here as you lift yourself up, creating your own kingdom and building up your finances that that now has become your God and your idol. And you're worshiping that instead of worshiping the God that wants to that wants to give you the blessing. And what you're really supposed to do is die to yourself. Let Christ rule and reign in you. And then now that he's gotten rid of you, hallelujah, he can start to build you up and he can start to form his life in you. And then now the problem. See, he's got to get us to a place where he can even trust us with prosperity, where he can trust us with the blessings of the kingdom of God. Because yeah. if not, we're just to hoard it all for ourselves. <laughs> Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. That's just one vein. That's just one imagination, one mindset. There's so many mindsets, and I don't really have that time to spend this much time on this. But I mean, you can sit here and you can say, oh, no, I have a different mindset. I believe that God, God is love. And he is. Hallelujah. And that everybody has a right to love. Mm -hmm. And that their definition of what their love is, is their own personal business. Mm -hmm. And that if that's how they want, I ain't trying to tell nobody how to love. I'm just trying to tell people about the love of Jesus, my friend. But don't try to tell me that that's okay. It, you know... I, I'm not going to talk about the dream that I had, the last part of that dream. I'll tell you all about it till the next time I preach. But I want you to know that I don't even have as much of a problem with people if that's how they want to live their life. I've come a long way. People can live their life how they choose to live their life. Just don't try to convince me that that's normal. Don't try to convince me that that's okay whenever I'm over here trying to tell you that this is what's normal and that this is what's okay. But you're going to tell me that I can't say that anymore? Did you know that that the Republicans passed the, they're, they're trying to pass it. The Republicans. That's a lot, a lot of you folks, right? I mean, uh, okay, I'm a registered Republican. So a lot of us folks. Let's put it that way. A lot of us folks, all right? The Republicans are trying to pass a bill right now against anti-Semitism. Right? But what and what, what does that mean? It means that you hatred towards the Jewish people. And that it was spawned off of all of this. Oh, Lord, I didn't mean to get political. I never preach on politics, and y'all know that. But it was spawned off of all this Soros-backed, uh, Soros-backed. And I know it was Soros-backed before I saw the news say it. I told Miss Angela. I said, that ain't nothing but George Soros' money right there. Just like he did for the Wall Street debacle. And I'm telling you right now, this is all part of the end game scheme, my friend. Okay, this whole Soros-backed. Palestinian protests against the, the, the Jewish people. Is it right for that to happen? Absolutely not. But this is all a ploy and a play to get a cause upheaval in the midst of our, Ameri our American citizenry. And listen, it, now do they really hate? There's a hate all over the world. What I'm trying to say is this, is that in response to this, they're passing a bill against anti-Semitism that says that they're trying to pass, that says that anything that says that a Jewish person or the Jewish people collectively, that they've done wrong or caused trouble on the earth, that that would be considered hatred towards the Jews. So essentially the concern now in the House or wherever it is in the Senate is, is that that means that the Bible is anti-Semitic. Because see, the Jews, the Pharisees hung Jesus on the cross. And that they're saying that if you now say that, that that would be hate speech against anti-Semitism. And that now, see, but you know, it wouldn't even surprise me if it passes, my friend. And I wouldn't even blame it on the Republicans. There's a satanic, listen, and that's part of what I want to get people together for, to pray. I didn't even plan on getting into all this, Lord. No, the Lord wants to say it. And I'm going to preach it in the next message I preach. But listen, we're so caught up in the Republican-Democrat puppet show. I'm here to tell you, listen, I believe in, I believe in capitalism, my friend. I believe in capitalism and I believe in trickle-down economics. Okay, because I, I know that it works. But when I don't want my American liberties and freedoms taken away from me. But what I'm trying to say is we're so caught up in this little puppet show that we don't even see that the prince of this world is playing games with everybody's head in the church and done falling asleep and doesn't understand we're supposed to be on our knees crying out to put the right king on the throne. And it's not Trump. I'm all about I voted for Trump the first time and I'll vote for him the second time. But Trump is not Jesus, my friend. And we got to get our head right. And we got to get our heart right. And we got to understand that we need to 
cry out to God while you can still walk out like I told you this morning and heard the birds chirping and there was peace in the street and there wasn't Chinese soldiers running around and I was able to drive to church and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're spoiled in this country. That's right. That's when they asked me to pray for that one accord, the Lord brought back Ezekiel chapter 16. And they said, pray for our economy. Pray for better jobs. And the Lord gave me that vision. And it was flowing great. And it reminded me of the lyric in America the Beautiful. Purple mountains majesty. And amber waves of grain. And the Lord said, I've already blessed you. I've already blessed you. I gave you. I, I lifted you up just like I did my daughter Israel in Ezekiel 16 when I found her without her card cut and laying in her own blood and unsalted. And I went over there and I cut her cord and I made her my own. And when she was of age, I married her and I clothed her and embroidered linen and I put gave her precious jewels. But then she was lifted up and because of her own renown, she became prideful. The Lord saying to us his people the American church I've already blessed you church when are you going to seek after me when are you going to quit sitting here and, and wallowing in your prosperity when are you going to fall down on your face and call out for me in my holiness when are you going to have a heart like Azahel and put the right king on your throne because listen to me he wants to start with your heart my friend he wants to put the right king on your heart and once he puts the king on my heart and your heart, he can get us to come Jesus. together. <laughs> he can get us to come together. Jesus. Amen. And to walk in true unity. Yes. With the right mindset for his kingdom. Yes. Yes. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. Jesus. Lord, help us. Jesus. Don't let the imaginations get in your way, my friend. All kinds of vain imaginations, but at the heart, the heart of it, you know what it is? It's a lie from Satan. A, an imagination that exalts itself above the knowledge of God is a lie from Satan. Lies that say you're not really changed. No, you are changed. If you're born again this morning, yes. you are a new creation yes. in Christ Jesus. If you're not born again, you're not. But hallelujah, you can be born again. All you got to do is cry on the name of Jesus. Amen. And mean business with him. Amen. But if you have cried on the name of Jesus, and if you have accepted Christ into your heart, and you meant it from your heart, you are a new creation in Christ. Hallelujah. Don't believe a lie of the devil. Your children, the, the, the enemy wants to come in here and tell you, oh, your children aren't going to serve the Lord. You're a liar. He's a liar. I'm not even paying attention to that. Look, whatever I see with my physical eyes, I'm realizing nowadays, guess what? That, most of this stuff that we see is all a lie anyway. It's like a, maybe I'm going too far. It's like a digital representation. It's like a hologram. If they show you Tupac, don't believe it. It ain't real, right? It's like a hologram. This ain't even the reality. Reality is what this word says right here. I believe this with all of my heart, my friend. And I'm not going to back off of it. So even if I don't see what I want to see in my own children's lives or in my own life, whatever, no, 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 no. He's a liar and the Lord's word is true. I'm going to hold on to the King of Kings and I'm going to hold on to his truth. You don't believe lies that tell you you're going to die from that disease. No, the Lord has the last say. So he's a healer. He'll heal your body. He'll heal your broken body. Amen. We're going to believe the Lord. Amen. Your marriage isn't going to make it. You can't win this battle. No. No. The Lord is the truth. Yes, he is. This truth will minister to your heart and to your life. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself. Don't build your house on this shifting sand, my friend. You ever been to the beach and the waves are pretty strong and you're standing in the surf? And the waves hit, and then I, I've been in that where, where it's kind of like you can feel that that sand shifting. It's like it pulls it out from under you. That's what the Lord don't build. That the world is shifting sand. If you build your life, listen to me. I'm hitting home. If you build your life on everything that you've known before, Amen. and something changes, everything. I'm talking about everything but Jesus. The political structure. Thank God. For, uh, I can't say it enough. Thank God I was born in America. 
I mean, dude, I've been gone in so many circles. I've been to, I know y'all hear me say this, but I've turned 10 in Singapore. I've been to Venezuela. I've been to Mexico four times. I've even been to Europe, and I don't want to be European. Thank God I'm an American. But I'm telling you right now, if something shifts, you better be ready. Jesus is not an American. You better be ready to hold on to Jesus. Your Christianity cannot be built on your American citizenship. You are a citizen of the kingdom of God, and Jesus is the king. Hallelujah. And we need to get our head right on that. Hallelujah. We, we need to get our heart right on that. Jesus. <laughs> I wish Isaiah would have picked up some of that armor. Amen. The shield of faith. Gonna just put that shield of faith right up there and push that fiery dart in the air. Amen. Do you, do you know who you are in Christ this morning? I think it's important that I say that. Do you realize that when you said yes to Jesus, you might not realize this. This is really, really important right now. When you said yes to Jesus and you invited him into your heart, let me tell you, it's something happened. Okay. Something miraculous happened. Okay, I know. I'm, okay, I'm thinking about the tombstone over there. <laughs> Something really miraculous happened in the eyes of God, in the heart of God. The old man that you were that was born in Adam was placed into Christ, the last Adam. God became man because the wages of sin is death and the gift of, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God made Adam without sin, so the last, and so that means that if the wages of sin is death, that means you couldn't die for your own sin. That's why the Islamic martyr can't die for sin, because everybody's sin is tainted. That's why Mary can't be your mediator. <laughs> There's one mediator between man and God, the man Christ Jesus, because God became a man. And because he was without sin, when he died, he paid the sin death. Yes. And when you put faith in Christ, the Bible says that, that God put you in him. And in the mind of God, according to the scripture in Romans chapter 6, you died with him. The old man that you were that was born of Adam died with him. The old man that... You were born of Adam was buried with Jesus in the tomb. And the new man that you were resurrected as a new man when Jesus resurrected from the grave. That's Romans chapter 6. That's, that's who you are. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. All things have become new. The Holy Spirit and your spirit have become one. Amen. Amen. And, and so I want you to know that that's who you are. And that's your identification. You have a new identity. See, we live in the midst of a world that's having an identity crisis. That's right. They don't know who they are. That's right. Sad. We, we don't want to be haters. We want to be lovers. Lovers of human souls. They're hurting. And they don't know and they're rejecting. So many are rejecting, but it doesn't mean even in the midst of their pain and their heartache and even as they move forward with their own plans for their own lives, it doesn't mean that God can't show up and transform them and give them new life. But we can't shrink back from the truth. People are in, in, in this identity. They're looking for this new life and they're looking for this love, but it's not real love. Yeah. And so much of the church is willing to talk about love, but it's not even the real love of God. Some, ush, some squishy, ishy love. Some, some little, almost like a, a, a lovey-dovey love. And I mean, don't get me wrong, God's lovey-dovey. He loves you. Amen. You're praying to you in his arms at night when your heart's broken, just like you would your baby. Amen. But God committed his love for us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the other God. God's love is vital. 
Because the kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. Yes, yes. God took it by force. The Lord spoke that to me the other night. Jesus took it by force. Jesus took it by force, my friend. It was a forceful, violent death that our Lord had to suffer to purchase victory. And I want you to know this morning that if you'll believe that and trust in that and just give him a little bit every day, just give him a little bit every day, he's going to transform you. So King, so Azahel had one thing on his mind. There was one purpose, and it was to put the right king on the throne. Amen? What could the body of Christ do for the Lord if we all started right there? If I said, start with me, Lord. Start with me, Pastor Matt, and all of my wrong mindsets that I've had in the past, all of my thinking that I had everything figured out. I told, some, I told a Christian at the urgent care the other day, he was a leader in a, in a local church. And, and, and I told him, I said, dude, I said, let me tell you something. And he told me about a revelation that the Lord had, had given him. Okay. So he, he said, tell us stop. Praise God. I'm like, hallelujah, brother. Paid in full. Thank you, Jesus. The finished work of Jesus. When Jesus said, it is finished, what he said, according to the Greek language, is tetelestai. It is finished. There's no more work to be done. That's why Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And so we're sitting there and we're talking. And I was like, praise God. I, I, I said, you know, that's good stuff, man. And then we started talking. And I was like, you know what the Lord's showing me, though, is that... There's that so many people in the body of Christ who think that we got everything so figured out that we've disconnected ourselves and we've become isolationists, or at least that's where I've been for many years. And the Lord's telling me, no, you got to come back and you got to seek opportunity for unity. <laughs> and I don't know, in the midst of the conversation, I was like, dude, like you were wrong. <laughs> you were wrong 12 years ago. You and your pastor were wrong 12 years ago because you didn't know Ted Lester and I've been knowing that stuff for 12 years. I'm just just being real with you. I'm not proud of that. I'm just telling you. You understand what I'm saying? And if we're not careful, we will think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. And whether it's about Ted Lifestyle or something else, there are Christians in this place right here, right now. And you think because you got some new level of understanding, some new level of revelation that everybody else ain't got. And then at the same time, you're looking down on your brother or your sister. When in reality, if we would start with me, and we would say, Lord, start with me. Put Jesus on my heart. Have your way in my heart, right? Then, and then we would be here to prefer our brothers over ourselves. Yeah. We wouldn't think so more highly of ourselves than what we ought to, but then we would prefer our brothers and our sisters over ourselves. And we would help them to, help to let Jesus be on the throne of their heart. Amen? Amen. The second thing that I saw about Azahel was that he didn't run to the right or the left. You know, I, I said, man, that is so good right there because I, I ended up, I ended up uh, looking it up. How many times was that phrase used in the Bible? At least 13 times. Do not turn to the right hand or to the left hand. The Lord said it. He was talking about walking the straight and narrow path. He was talking about walking the straight and narrow path and not moving to the right hand or to the left hand. And you know that as Christians, there's been many times in our heart and in our lives that we have gone off to the right hand or to the left hand. Yes. You know, and, and I want you to know that and that in this church, we have spent a lot of time to try to teach people. How do I do that, though, preacher? How do I not turn to the right or not turn to the left? And all I can tell you is that it's faith in what I already told you. Faith that you're a new creation in Christ. Continued faith that the same way you received him, so shall you continue to walk in him. And faith to believe that the Holy Spirit, if you will believe the truth, will give you the power that you need in order to live right for God. But I'm going to tell you something that where we might have missed it and where many people are missing it nowadays is that we've forgotten the fear of God. We've forgotten the awe of God. We've forgotten the reverence of God. We don't reverence his presence. We don't reverence his word. And what I'm trying to say is, is that it's not that big of a deal. 
it's not that big of a deal to tell just a little lie. No, it's a huge deal because you just offended God and you just offended his word. It's not that big of a deal for me to put my eyes on these things. No, it is a big deal because the Holy Spirit lives in you and you just have the Holy Spirit watching that with you. What are you doing? Are you preaching law, preacher? No, I'm not preaching law. I'm preaching holiness and righteousness that comes through Christ and a relationship with him and the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us into what is right. You know, listen, I know you've been made right in your spirit, but you think your soul's not supposed to get on board with your spirit? No, your soul is supposed to get on board with your spirit. That's why the scripture says that your mind must be renewed. So that whenever you know that your mind is not thinking like the mind of Christ, that's supposed to be a signal to you. Do, do we think that God's okay with that is what I'm trying to say. Like, I'm just trying to say, like, this is important. This is important that people understand this. Y'all y'all agree with me? Sometimes I look at the crowd and I'm just like, I don't know. I feel like I need to give the microphone to somebody else. No, seriously. I mean, I'm not trying to... Like be extra. <laughs> I'm just trying to make a point that you know. Th- th- listen, and you don't even have to. You preach it to me, preach. You, you, you don't really even have to like me. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to make a point. I was voted the most likely, the least likely to succeed in the eighth grade. <laughs> I've never been a popular person. You don't have to like me, but you need to understand something about me. I care about your soul, my friend. I care about your soul. And not just your soul. I care about the people's souls that are out there. And you can call me anything you want to call me. You can call me a hard preacher. You can think the wrong thing about me, whatever you want. But the only reason that I say the things that I say is because I care about your soul and I care about my own soul. And I believe what this word says. And one day you are going to stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I'm here to tell you that he's holy. And yes, he is full of love. And he has proved his love when he died for us on the cross. But I'm telling you right now, it's not going to be like what we think, you know. And I know I keep saying, oh, knuckle bump, thank you, Lord. You did it for me. woo No, he is holy. He is righteous. I guarantee you we're going to fall at his feet as though we were dead. And he will let us look into the eyes of the one that redeemed us and we will see nothing but love. And we will be so thankful that we believed it. We will be so thankful that we allowed him to have his way in our heart. But I'm here to tell you right now, he that knows to do right, doesn't do it to him. It is sin. The Lord wants his people to believe his word and start walking according to his will, my friend. We got to quit making excuses. He's not okay with that. Is that too hard or is that just the truth? It's the truth. It is the truth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Proverbs 4, 26 and 27. Ponder the path of your feet. Let all your ways be established. Turn not to the right hand or to the left. Remove your feet from evil. As the hell didn't just walk a straight path, amen, he, he ran full blacks towards it to preserve God's will. One, number three that I learned, learned from Eisenhower is that he wasn't really interested in preserving his own will. And that wasn't his interest. He was, he was interested in preserving the will of, the, of God for the right king to get on the throne. That's the heart of Jesus. Look what Jesus said in Matthew 20, verses 25 through 28. Jesus called them unto him and said, You know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them. You know what that means? The the leaders of the Gentiles like to control people. Everybody likes to be a boss. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ever see, you, you know, you can go work for one company, you're gonna have a boss, dude, and a complete control freak, right? Got you under his thumb, and then you go work for another boss. He still expects things to be done right, but it's it's a lot easier to work for him. He's saying that the lords of the Gentiles, they exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. 
Diakonos. I'm pretty sure I didn't look it up. Diakonos, where the word servant, deacon comes from. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for men. Boy, wouldn't that be something if our leaders, amen, were like that? Lord, that, I want that to be my heart. You know, there's been times that it had that it, I thought it was my heart and it wasn't. And there's times that maybe some people think it's still not my heart. But I can tell you that that's what I want my heart to be. Amen. I want to serve him. I want to serve him by serving his people. <coughs> Amen. I can't promise you that it's going to make everybody happy, but I'm really, and I, I don't mean to be rude. I don't really care. I want to make him happy. My prayer has been for years that I would hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. And had he not changed me and given me hope, I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't have heard it. I'm telling you right now, you want to hear those words. Amen. I want you to hear those words. I, I want you to. I want us all to hear those words. I want. The, I would want the whole world to hear those words. I don't want anybody to perish. There is a real hell to shun. Jesus preached about hell. Nobody wants to preach about hell anymore. It, it, you know, I, I was listening to a video the other day. They didn't say it exactly like this, but you know what the Europeans call vacation, holiday. It's not like they're going on holiday when you go to hell. Amen. It's not going to be like a little weekend retreat. That's right. It's re real stuff. The good news is, is that if you've given your heart to Christ and if you've been born again, amen, that the, that the life of God is on the inside of you and you're not going to hell. <laughs> Praise, God. Praise God. But you can't live according to your own will. And you can't live your own life any old way you want to. Amen. I heard somebody say the other day, man, if your message is always correct, then maybe you got daddy issues. <laughs> maybe I got daddy issues, but I'll tell you one thing, I got a father issue too. And my father's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's the father of lights, and in him is all blessing, and he does not change, amen. And he was the same God, God that hated sin in the Old Testament. He's the same God that hates sin in the New Testament. And I'm telling you right now, there might listen, the condition of the modern church is a total mess. And I know I've been preaching this for 10 years years, but it's been true for at least 10 years. If not longer, it's probably been true for 40 years, and it's not getting better. It's, it's only seeming to get worse, and I'm not saying that there's no people out there that are not the people of God. I believe that there are, and I will admit to you that I believe that there's more out there than what I realize, but at the same time, it's a remnant. It's a remnant, and I want to make sure that you are part of that remnant. Because now everybody's watching so many YouTube videos, and I'm sure there's good preachers on YouTube, but there's also a lot of stuff out there that's not right. Amen. Amen. And God wants his people to get right. Yes. Amen. He wants us to get right. Yes. The days are growing dark, my friend. Do y'all believe that? Yes. yes. And you know what the good news is? I just want to remind you, somebody else is going to be preaching next weekend. <laughs> Praise God, that's going to be a good preacher. And, and, and you don't have to worry that every time you come, you're going to feel like you're getting a spanking. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to make sure we got some other preachers to preach the truth. Amen. But I'm, but I'm here to tell you that I'm concerned about the souls of God's people. And I'm going to do what he called me to do. Amen. Amen. Number four, I as a hell was ready to die for this purpose. The Christian life, as we have been discussing, is all about dying to self. Simply stated, he died for us, talking about Jesus, and our flesh must die for him. There's an ongoing spiritual tug of war that's taking place. Do you know that? Where the Holy Spirit is constantly revealing to us the uncleanness. Sometimes, you know, people are like, well, I'm, I, I didn't sin today. Well, maybe it's more like you didn't realize you sinned right. today. Yes. Right? What you didn't think was sin today, next year you might think was sin. Because he's always cleansing our hearts. That's right. He's always moving on. So when he reveals something that's sin and he reveals something that's in our heart, the right response is to yield to him. To let him have his way. Amen. 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 To let him have his way in our attitudes and our mindsets. Praise God. Jesus. An ongoing spiritual tongue of war. 
once you think you're sanctified today, you'll realize I was wrong. And we don't want to refuse to humble ourselves. Amen. He said that God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. If we'll humble ourselves under the hand of God, he'll give grace to us. Grace is a beautiful thing because it's not just forgiveness from God. It's also the power of the Holy Spirit working in your life. Grace is the power of the Holy Spirit changing things for you that you can't change for yourself. Some people would sit here today and they would say, man, I don't know how or what I'll ever get free from that. I'm here to tell you you're already free. Yes. <laughs> the scripture says you're already free. And what you just need is you just need to believe in and watch the grace of the Holy Spirit do it for you to change you yes. and to partner with him. Quit partnering with lies from the world, partnering with lies from the enemy. Partner with the truth of God and let him change you. Amen. Praise God. I wanted to say that grace is also, I like to think that grace is synonymous with resurrection power. But if, if we don't die with him, we might be getting something, but we're not really getting what God's offering. It's important that we understand that. So much about the gospel is dying dying to self. We're really the one that stands in the way. Singers, musicians, y'all can come forward. We're really the ones that stand in the way. And if we're not dying to self, we're not really accessing resurrection power of God. Paul said in Philippians 3.10, he said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. I'm talking about Azahel died on the battlefield. Azahel poured his heart out on the battlefield. I remember I preached a message a long, long time ago. I don't remember exactly, but it was something like put, put your cleats on. Or something. And you know, like, some people say, I want to die with my boots on. And I just, yeah, I want to die with my cleats on. In other words, I want to, like, I see that. I see him as a warrior. And he died on the battlefield of life. And I don't know about, there's no retirement for the children of God. I mean, I'm not saying you can't retire from your job. But there's no retirement from serving the king. And the question is, are we, how are we going to leave this life? And that, that one song I was going to get Naya to sing, and that part about, will I be, I want to be singing when the evening comes. See, he's talking about a transition whenever the sun's going down. He's talking about your life. And, and, and then whenever that time is near, right? And I'm getting ready to move over to the other side. Then I'll be singing for 10,000 years and forevermore. There's an eternal life to gain, and I don't know about you, but I want to go down like eyes of hell. You, listen to me, church. People may not agree with my eschatology. <laughs> what I mean is my understanding of the end times. You may have a different view on that. And that's fine. We're free to believe whatever we want to believe. But let me just say this. Every mountain is not worth dying on, but some mountains are worth dying on. As it helped die on a mount on a field, but it was worth dying for. And I'm here to tell you that times are getting dark. They're trying to prevent us as the people of God from being able to believe in the truth. And you got to prepare our hearts. we got to prepare our hearts for battle. Spiritual battle. And you're going to have to fight that battle between, with you and the Lord. The fastest growing church right now is in China, but it's underground. They will die right now if they try to come together like you and I. Come together. I mean, I'm just telling you right now, people ain't like to hear this kind of stuff, but we don't realize how much of a privilege it is to be able to come into the house of God and to worship the Lord. We don't realize what a privilege it is to have a worship team. I'm just going to be real with you. We take stuff for granted. We don't realize how privileged we are to have the Word of God. I've heard stories that like 10 different people will have one page of peace in China and they try to memorize it so that when they can come together, wherever they come together, they can share it with one another. And I don't know about you, but there's been times in my world that I hadn't even cracked the book open. 
He sits up on a shelf getting dusty. Jesus. What else? Jesus. 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 If you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to know that you can call on the name of the Lord. You can say, Jesus, I want you. I need you. I want to serve you, Lord. I don't even know if I know what that means, but I believe you died on the cross for me. Come into my heart, Lord. Forgive me of my sin. Have your way. Maybe somebody on the video, you're going to watch it, you're going to think, I need Jesus. If you have Jesus, I want you to know the Holy Spirit lives in you. You need to cry out for more. <laughs> cry out for more of the Holy Spirit. The Lord, baptize me with your Holy Ghost and fire, Lord. Fill me up to overflowing to where Jesus has come out of me. <laughs> you won't regret it. It'd be the best thing you ever did when you turned your life over to the King. Lord, make us a people that will pour our hearts out for you on the battlefield of life. Prepare the hearts of your people. Get us ready, Lord. Get us ready for what lies ahead. Most people believe we're in the last days. Oh, sweet Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Won't you stand? Stand for me this morning. If you need prayer, I want you to know I want to pray with you.